Thank you. Thank you for choosing to stay here instead of sunbathing at British Bay or Dunleary. I know it was a tough choice today. Let me ask you three questions before we start. So please raise your hand if you are quite comfortable in your today job. If you love your today job. If you like more or less your today job. If you are okay with your today job. Um, is my English so poor? Okay. So please raise your hand if you plan to switch your job in the next three, five years. That was a smart decision not to go to British Bay today. Right. So a career change. When I, when I tell these words, what do, you what do you think about it? How do you feel? So does, it feels, does it feel daunting, uncomfortable? Do you feel energized, excited? There are just 14 options here, but there are much more in life. So just think, what, what, is it, what does it mean for you? So you're all here to listen about career change. How does it feel when I say, yeah, you probably switch your careers in the next three, five years. It's important. It will affect your, your life. How does it feel? Remember what you answer to yourself now. So if it's scary, if it's inspiring, if it's unavoidable, whatever, keep this word. So now let me explain who, who am I, why I choose to speak about career change. I, I am a career, I am, I am a coach, I am a life coach. Part of my clients come because they want career coaching. And um, most of them want to, to, to stay happy, to be happy, to become happy. And as they say, if you want to be happy, get an ice cream. But if you want to stay happy, get a career coach. That, that, that was a poor joke, I know, but there is a, some sense of it. Why? career coach. Before getting, be, becoming a coach, I was a journalist for some time, a sales manager, a VP of innovation, a board member. I took cover for business development. I did multiple other jobs and all of this listed here are just those that paid. So I'm not counting even volunteering. I changed cities within one country because of the job. I have changed countries. My oldest child changed school six times. So I know what change means. I know how it feels. And I know that 45% or sorry, 41%, according to this study, will switch industry for their new next job in the coming year. And this was a US Chamber of Commerce uh, study. So why people change, you may ask. You have your own answer, but it's probably one of these. So it is either getting your skills a better match to the new industry. Maybe your industry got or whatever disrupted or eliminated as some. Maybe it is uh, not any longer necessary to, to have a degree to be successful in your career, in your job. Maybe it's just uh, trying to stay out of uh, close contact, like many thought within the last couple of years. So regardless of this, there are much more reasons that you may have why you change. You may want to follow your ex-colleagues, your friends, your relatives, in some case. Some of you just want a higher salary, and that's okay. The challenge with the higher salary is if you want more money, all you get is more money. Be careful. Basically, why this happening now? It's because the attitude toward career and toward job is changing. So we know that uh, 50 years ago, probably people just had one, maybe two jobs in their lifetime. So today it's more likely you would have between 10 and 15 in your lifetime. And how you do this without changing industry, especially if you started in, I don't know, photo printing or banking or mobile, op mobile telecom. These industries are redefined. They're, they're different from what they were 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. Some of you may not even think that you would change your career so frequently. It doesn't matter. You will. You may not want to admit it, but you will. And having this perspective that most likely you'll change your jobs every two, three years, and that's okay. It's not something to be afraid of. It's something to manage. It's something to be prepared for rather than say, oh, wow, I have to change a job because industry is no longer there. It's not just company moving out of country or closing down. 
So let me pause here just for a moment. So uh, when you see these stats and when you see this uh, uh, information, some of you may thought, yeah, okay, so just give us an advice. So what do we do? How do we prepare? And the first answer is super simple. You have to get your vision and strategy. So what do you want? Second, you plan. Third, you go and do. That's it. It could be end of the presentation if all of us were super smart like robots and we do what we think we will do. But we are human. We don't do what we think we will do. We do something different every time. So let's start with a routine, what I call, that's uh, not a scientific term, routine career hygiene, right? So unless you know what, this what these words mean on this slide for you in your life, the rest of the presentation would matter. If you don't work with your mindset, the rest will fail because your mind will trick you out and will pretend you know the answers and you will get the wrong job again and again. If you don't watch your energy level, or for example, you may watch your energy level and always complain that, oh, I am always exhausted, but you never go to bed without checking your emails. Yeah, that's also your choice, right? Also, if you do not invest in connecting and networking or building your personal brand, regardless of the career, regardless of the industry, regardless of your level, you could be just starting as an intern, you could be board level, doesn't matter. You have to invest in your visibility. If people don't see you daily on their social networks or whatever media they uh, respect, you don't exist. You may not want it, you may not like it. I don't like it personally, but liking is not my job, right? My job is making you aware of what is happening. It's like you look out of the window, you see sun. You cannot ignore it, it's there if you don't like it. It's up to you. Education and skills, deliberately I put it the last one. So you have to keep this in mind, but this is kind of okay to be late with skills and your education background. But if you're late with mindset, watching out your emotions, controlling your energy level, that will lead you nowhere. Even if you are very skilled, very professional, have five diplomas, 10 certificates, nobody will know you have all this. And you will not even tell because you don't have enough energy levels, right? We'll keep this, some of this explored a bit, a bit more in detail in the next slides. But you have a quote from uh, Daniel Pink's book about regret. Watching out regret is super important because, because when you are just starting assessing where you are currently in your career situation. Remember about checking the scale. From gratitude to regret, where are you? Are you sure you are, great, you are uh, expressing and verbalize your gratitude every day? Or you are complaining and regretting every day? And if you regret, what is this about? Past choices? Choices made, made by someone like parents instead of you? If you keep this scale in mind, you will have higher chances to get better decisions. Because if you are constantly tend to be in regret part of the scale, this regret will uh, draw your energy and you will always focus on past mistakes. Or what you think were mistakes, because in reality you never know. So let's speak now about uh, how you give yourself permission, how you make a decision. And, uh, Basically, there are two components here. So one is you have to be very true and honest with yourself. What is your situation in your life? When you think, yeah, we'll probably change, I'll probably change my career. I'll probably change my industry. Right? Career is not your life. Career is part of your life. For someone, it is a significant part. For someone, it's just part of their life. But it's just only one part. You have your friends. You have your aspirations. You have your hobbies. You have your family and much more. So your life is much broader than your career. And when you assess all this, you have better understanding where you are in your career. And also, uh, as a coach, basically, I love, I love asking uncomfortable questions. So one of these, I warn you, this is uncomfortable. So 
you have your career. You're in different stages on your career now, different levels. Did you plan your career from the very beginning and execute it until this day? If the answer is no, it's probably something that's happening beyond your control, right? You can say, yeah, but that's what do we do? Well, that's don't, let's come into regret. No. On regret to gratitude scale, you have to be closer to gratitude because this will replenish your energy level and this will bring you to the right mindset. So, when you clearly understand your situation and you are honest with yourself, it is easier to assess and easier to plan. Also, if you don't know your life purpose or you don't know where you're going, like Alice in Wonderland, it doesn't matter, you're going in the right direction. So, if you didn't plan your career until today, and you ask me whether you're on the right direction, the answer is yes, yeah, you're in the right direction. Unless you want to change it, there will be a new direction. And here is a new scale. The scale called, again, not a scientific term, from calm to freaking out. So, and if you currently, let me put it correctly, don't like your job, it doesn't matter, because if you focus on not liking, it doesn't serve you. It doesn't help you make a better decision. You have to stay calm, you have to manage your mindset, and you have to understand what's the broader reality, rather than just, oh, complaining to everybody, every friend knows that you hate your job. Does it help you? Does it help you write in a book about how you hate your job? Maybe this book will brought you much something, uh, some, some, something better. And the last of the components, just before we move to the next stage, is uh, what are the obstacles? The obvious ones. When you think about career change, what comes to mind? Oh, what will people say? What my, my, what my mother will say? What my friend will say? Will I fail? Oh, it means starting from scratch again. Oh, oh, oh learning new skills, I don't want. Maybe. Will I be successful? Uh, what if I fail? How will I look? It doesn't matter. Is it legal? Yeah, if it's legal, that's fine, right? So if it's not, it's your choice, not mine. Do I have or do I need support from my family or those who are close to me? You may not have support from your family, but then you have to choose not to need this support. Without approval of your partner, your parents, your brothers, sisters, you can survive, right? I hope. And also, about the transition, you have to assess your situation and remember the previous scales from calm to freaking out and from gratitude to regret. If you, are, if you understand where you are in your life, truly and honestly towards yourself, you'll be able to answer, will you sustain the transition? And financially, emotionally, geographically, legally, and if the answer is, okay, I will sustain, What's, there is no, no more any um, questions, right? So just go and plan. And from this moment, that was the background. So let's now think, okay, what, what do you do? How do you prepare for a career change? If you consider everything that I have mentioned, if you watch out your mindset, if you know, learn, listen, and watch your emotions, if you prepare and understand your current situation, and if you know the purpose and the, basically the direction where you are going, so what to do next? Let's speak of uh, three scenarios. So the first one is easy. You may be early in your career, maybe mid-career, but you are quite happy with your job. You say, yeah, that's fine, so, but I know probably my industry will disappear in 10 years. I read some reports. Maybe my uh, employer will go out of business, out of country, out of scope, doesn't matter. But you have time, right? Time is a very important factor here. You may say, yeah, let's explore the fields. What are the opportunities out there? You just uh, do the assessment. You better replenish your energy level. You keep fit, healthy, healthy mindset, everything. You assess, you explore. You define the elements of your future success. You plan and you start ex executing. On the way, you may have people who support you, who help you. You are moving there slowly. Right? So, I have two hints if you are in this stage. One hint, sorry, one hint is think about money. Yeah, it's easy, right? Because you, oh, sorry. Apologies.
Okay. Okay, it's probably easy to think about money because money, <laughs> it's something that most of us think uh, on a daily basis, right? So question is if we are successful in thinking about money. So most of us think of money as either amount or a goal. Neither of these two help you because if you think of money as goal, the biggest trap is you hit the goal, guess what? You have a new one, right? Yeah, I've been there, I know what it means, it doesn't help. If you think of money as an amount, I want to reach this, it's kind of masking the goal. You want to take this, whatever, to be proud of yourself, to, it, it just replaces the real value, it replaces the real goal, and when you reach this amount, again, you're in the similar trap, you want to reach the next one. Instead of doing this once again and again, I uh, suggest you think of money as a resource. Like imagine you, you're building a house or whatever you do and you want to paint something. And if you come to buy paint, you don't say I want five kilograms or 10 liters. You want to paint, right? So you, the goal is not getting paint. Goal is have something painted. Same with money. You don't want to have money. You want to be able to use this for something. And if you shift this perspective, it, is, it changes, changes your approach. It changes your relationship with the money. Otherwise, you'll find the same trap over and over again. Exercising. So that's my favorite because it's so simple. Yet most of people say, yeah, oh, come on. So shall I go to, to a gym every day, 6 a.m.? I would go. Shall I run? No, no, it's, it's ridiculous. How do I look? I never, I never run, so what people will think? Again, so this slide about what people will think, we already passed this stage, right? This helps you reset on a regular basis and replenish your energy level. And it's not just something that you can do or cannot. This is compulsory. You have to take care of yourself. Otherwise, who is this person you are building this new career change for? If you don't exercise, you don't keep yourself well, right? And to exercise, don't start, start as small as possible. So uh, let me give you my personal story. I used to be into sports until I went into university. And uh, at that point, I just stopped. I thought, yeah, I'm healthy, I am fine. Why would I need sport? I started a family, kids, and then relocations. Why would I do sports? I feel okay, I feel good. There are nothing, no problems, right? Until I got spine problem. I couldn't walk. And then I decided, okay, once it's over, I'll go into sport. Did I go? No. Three years ago, no problems, so, fingers crossed, no problems. I thought, this could not last. This approach is not sustainable. And something just struck me and I said, yeah, I'll start running. I knew I couldn't start running after taking a pause for 20 years, but I started. I run for two minutes, walk for three, repeat it again for 30 minutes, few times a week. So today, fast forward, right? So today, I, I run about 100 miles a week, 100 kilometers, sorry, not, not miles. It would be a bit uh, overstatement. And this is possible, and I feel better and I know it's not feel, I feel better today. I am preparing for the changes of tomorrow. That was just an example. Everything is possible, even if you pause for 20 years like me, never too late to start. Scenario B, yeah, immediate response is needed. So you kind of neglected some changes in the industry, in the country, you overlooked something, but now you realize that it is unavoidable. You have to change career. What do you do? In addition to the previous three, which are now in the bottom, explore the fields, build the plan. So you have to choose your priority. And I know when I started researching on this a uh, few years back about priority, priority existed in just singular mode for many, many years, for a century. Until people of 20th century say, yeah, come on, how can you have one priority? It's too small, so we need to have priorities. And then plural appeared. That's weird. So you only can have one priority. Choose it. Choose it wisely. Watching out for your emotion. 
and listening to them carefully is super important because what emotions tell you? Emotion tell you the story that you didn't want to listen otherwise. In words, situations, events. When you experience certain emotion over and over again for months, years, days, usually you will understand, again, another uncomfortable question. Does it look into past? Does it look into present? Does it look into future? And if it is an emotion like regret that clearly looks into your past, that's where you send your energy. And if, if, you feed your energy, if you feed your past with your energy, yeah, your past will not get changed, right? But you still pour your energy there. That is why it is important not to miss, miss, uh, watch your emotion, so not to ignore them. And when you know your life fully, and when you see the big picture, then you can do the other advices that you have in the bottom on the slide that was in this scenario A. So, there are a couple of hints again from me. If you are in this stage where you need immediate response to your career, one is, one is what you're thinking. Because we, uh, again, this, this, I know this sounds funny, but people think they can think. It is, yeah, it's, we kind of know we can think. But if we, if we are so smart thinkers, first, why are we all here listening about career change? We, we could just read a book, think, and decide. Same for me. So when I first started coaching, I, I thought, okay, so this is ridiculous. People just go into coaching because they don't understand what they want. They could just think. It never works. So people read a book, think, and then do something that would be expected or that would help them. So what's your thinking? What's your limiting beliefs? What's your patterns? What's your mind traps? Unless you know this and unless you are familiar with your typical mind traps, you wouldn't succeed. Sorry. Sleep, yeah, again, uh, this is super important, especially if you are facing some immediate change because you kind of prepare yourself for stressing out and you won't be in a better position unless you have enough sleep. It is simple, but it, it does work. So if you want an experiment, have three days, one hour, no screen time before bed. And then you just answer yourself honestly, do you, do you feel better? Do you think better? Okay, scenario C, too late to think, too late to plan, everything's in super danger, so what do we do? So then, you cannot go and plan, right? Because you're already freaked out by all meaningful scales, you are nowhere you want to be to make a clear decision. You have to reset, you have to take a break, literally take a break. It doesn't matter if you take a five minute break, a day break, a week break, you assess for yourself, you go outside, so to take a break, you need one of three large water body, like sea or lake or river, a forest or a field. So somewhere where the, your site does not face a wall 10 meters from you, right? So spacious, uh, ideally without gadgets. I know you'd want to take a picture from Instagram, but it's a separate story. And when you take a break, you have to let go of regrets. Unless you let go of regrets, it will be like running with a backpack filled with sand. You can try this. If you like it, keep your regrets. And then, speaking about skill set and mindset, these both are super different, but if you function where it is too late to change, too late to plan, you probably overlooked and underestimated both importance of mindset and level of your current skill set. So you have to work on this. On top, yeah, all the others that worked for the previous two scenarios. And again, a couple of hints here. Emotions, study emotions. I don't know about your emotional uh, IQ, right? So you just know for yourself. And you know if you hear the right emotion at the right moment, not just experience. Experience is cool. 
but listening and understanding your emotion is critical. Then you'll be more efficient. And same for letting go. I hope it clicks. Yeah, for letting go. Because if you bring your past regrets with you for the last 20 years, it will not serve you. Right? So how are we on time? 10? Okay, cool. So, there are three books. If I didn't persuade you, you can go, there are one, two, three, I'll have three book recommendations. And if you click the, I, I have no affiliate links, it just goes directly to Amazon. So if you want, you buy, if you don't, you don't. One is the squiggly career, which basically serves as a certificate saying you are allowed to change careers. This is not ridiculous. This is not painful. This is something that becomes part of our life. This is something that happens. This is something that will most likely happen to you. You will change careers. There is no longer strong and helpful career ladders. You probably are reliant on yourself, but you will be fine. You'll succeed. The other book for some of the audiences that are too shy to ask questions, like me, I, I, I think I am an introvert myself. Oh, sorry. I Right, so that, that was the perfect book for those who are too shy to ask questions. Career change for introverts. So what do you do if you are too shy to ask questions, to, ask, to, to, to go to your manager, to leave your industry, to leave your, career, to leave your job? So the author has been a, uh, an accountant, I guess. Yes, a management accountant for 10 years and then switched and then explored and researched on this topic. And this book just, I hope, help you to give a slightly different perspective on how to change careers if you have some limiting beliefs. I'm oh, sorry. And this, the last one, for those who are like me in their 40s and think of the uh, midlife rescue. So this is a remedy. I don't know if this remedy works for you specifically, but you can try. I guess saving your life or your career with a 10 pound investment, I think it's worthwhile, right? So if you are in the wrong place by your 40s, you can get anything like a headache, uh, you can get irritated every day, you can blame everything around. Question to you, are you able to do something about it? Or are you okay to stay where you are? You can be say, yeah, I'm okay where I am. I know I'm suffering, but I'm suffering a little. I'd rather suffer a little than take a plunge and uh, try a new career. Understandable. But then you have to be honest with yourself. 10 years from now, will you say thank you for this decision? If it is yes, that's okay. You don't have to punish. Uh, you, can, you can stay in your career. Now, with all these ha having been heard from me, I want you to look at this list of uh, perspectives on career change once again. And remember, recall the one that you thought in the beginning on the very first slide, right? Now, I want you to choose the perspective that will serve you in your career change. Not the one you had 30 minutes ago, but the one you choose to have, the one you want to have. Do you want still this to be daunting? Or do you want this to be rewarding? Do you want this to be scary? Or do you want this to be rebellious? Choose the one you want. Follow some advices. And if you want to connect, you can catch up with the LinkedIn or uh, my website. Happy to follow up on any discussion.